All right, uh, hello again from Japan, and thank you for coming back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm sorry that I haven't posted any videos in a while, but uh, I had a very busy summer. Uh, we did some traveling, uh, which was nice. And uh, I had a lot of work to catch on because of the traveling, and I also have a four-year-old daughter who keeps me busy when I'm trying to get other things done. Uh, but uh, now the summer is over, for better or for worse. Uh, my daughter has returned to school and I've managed to catch up on my work and now I have some more time to uh, post some more videos. So as you can tell by looking at the screen, today we're going to be talking about a Yashica camera. And specifically, we're going to be talking about the Yashica Electro 35 GSN rangefinder camera. So uh, if you're interested in buying a Yashica camera, uh, I sell these on my eBay and Etsy stores. Uh, please check the description uh, below the video for links to my stores. I've been working on uh, Yashicas longer than any other camera. When I first got into repairing uh, cameras, I began with uh, Yashicas. And over the last 12 years or so that I've been working on them, uh, I've repaired and sold about 1,500 of these guys. So I have a lot of experience in uh, an understanding about uh, the do's and don'ts and everything about them. So, so in this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the history of the camera. Uh, then I'm going to talk about uh, how the camera works, how you operate it. And then last I'll be uh, talking about uh, problems with these cameras and uh, solutions on how to fix most problems that you might have if you have an old Yashica uh, that's not working. So, getting to the history, uh, the Ashika uh, Electro 35 was introduced in the mid-1960s, and it was a revelation at the time. It was an amazing camera, uh, very technologically advanced for the time, and uh, it was Yashika's attempt to make a camera uh, which could deliver professional results without requiring professional skill. And uh, they were two important points to the Yashica Electro uh, 35. Uh, the heart of the Electro 35 was its lens, the Yashinon 45mm f1.7 lens, which was an improved adaptation of the lens used on the Yashica Lynx 14. So the lens in these cameras uh, is made from a very high quality glass with excellent coatings and they used what was called uh, rare earths in the manufacture or uh, thorium. So a lot of these uh, cameras, especially the earlier ones, you'll notice that the glass has a gold tint to it. And this is from the degradation of the thorium coatings used on the glass. Uh, some of these cameras, especially if you have like a CC, uh, if you hold a Geiger counter uh, on the inside of the camera, it's going to start uh, clicking madly as it, you know, as these do emit a little bit of uh, radiation. It's quite harmless, and you're not going to get cancer by shooting one of these cameras. And the use of the thorium glass was to allow uh, uh, larger apertures without a chromatic aberration. That means uh, when you shoot a larger aperture camera, especially on uh, like middle or longer lenses, they have trouble focusing all the colors on the exact same point. By using uh, thorium glass or the later fluorite glass, they were able to put all the colors on the same spot, which would give you uh, really good results. So uh, the Ashika uh, 45mm f1.7 lens is a really outstanding lens. And as I said, it's the heart of the camera. But equally important to the Electro 35 series was its brain. And, uh, and the brain was what controlled the light meter system in the Ele Ashika uh, Electro. And Yashica actually called it a computer brain at the time. Uh, the computer brain is underneath the film speed dial and behind the window in the front. And what it is, it's a little box of a fiber board to which is attached uh, four transistors, a number of resistors, um, uh, lots of wires, and a couple of light bulbs. And despite its uh, simplicity and old design, it's, it's excellent at what it does. Now, four transistors does not make a brain, but it does allow a camera to make really good and accurate exposures, as the Ashika does. Uh, you'll, you'll find that, uh, provided that the camera is in good working condition, that uh, the meter in one of these 1960s cameras rivals the, you know, the quality of exposures you get in a very modern digital camera. 
Uh, the drawbacks to the uh, Yashica meter system is the fact that the light meter system is located uh, outside the lens. And uh, the problem with this is that it makes using filters on the lens difficult. Uh, uh, in the 1960s, colored filters were quite, uh, uh, quite popular. Uh, different filters were used for uh, different types of film or when using flash or whatever. And also neutral density filters uh, would allow you to shoot uh, uh, the camera with the aperture at a wider setting and, uh, and with the 1 250th uh, maximum shutter speed still being adequate to get an exposure. Uh, uh, if you're using neutral density filters with the Ashika Electro, uh, you, can you can easily adjust the meter to compensate for the filters. However, if you're using color filters, you're going to have to read the instruction with the filters on how much to compensate. Uh, when using them. The controls of the uh, Yashica Electro series are all the same from the, the first to the last model. Uh, on the front of the lens we have a dial which has a B, an A, and kind of a zigzag arrow for the flash speed. Uh, pretty much nowadays you're, you're, only, you're only going to need to use the auto setting. Uh, the B is rather unique to electronically controlled cameras of the 60s. Uh, other electronic cameras made in the Japan in those days didn't come with it. For myself, I only find the B useful as if I'm cleaning the camera. I can remove the front lens group, set it to B, and hold the camera open with uh, a shutter cable or release cable, and that allows me to clean the junk off of the inside of the lens. If you set it to the auto system or auto setting uh, and you put the camera on a tripod in the middle of the night and push the shutter button, uh, the electronic brain is going to give you an accurate exposure uh, no matter how long it takes. So it's, you know, the auto setting is really the only one you need. And when these cameras came new, they came with a plastic uh, or a, a, a gold sticker on the side which said auto seal. Because a lot of people not knowing any better would accidentally switch it from you know to B or to the zigzag and then complain wondering why the shutter wasn't working properly. If yours isn't working properly uh, make sure it's set to the A. Uh, behind that ring is the uh, aperture selector ring which goes from f1.7 to f16. Now the Yashica Electro series is an aperture priority camera so what you do is you select the aperture you're going to use for the light available and uh, simply push the button and the camera will automatically adjust the correct shutter speed for the best exposure. So uh, on the top are two warning lights and these warning lights are also visible inside the viewfinder. So if you're shooting the camera outdoors and you touch the shutter button and the red light comes on, you can see it flickering on there, uh, that means that there's too much light uh, for the shutter speed and that the maximum speed isn't enough to compensate for it or to get an exposure with the light. So just uh, stop down uh, the aperture ring until the light goes off and you're good to go. And you have the yellow light here, the slow setting, and this comes on if uh, the shutter speed is going to be below 1 30th of a second. So below 1 30th of a second, unless you're really, really steady, it's really hard to get an exposure which isn't blurred. So just uh, open up the shutter so the shutter speed increases. Uh, all <coughs> of the Electro 35 series come with a PC sync on the outside for a flash. Uh, this can be used with a bulb flash or strobe flash. You can adapt a PC sync uh, a wire if you're using a later model flash. Uh, the GSN added a hot shoe on the top for a flash, and when using a strobe flash with the GSN, just use the, you know, the settings recommended on the flash and it should work fine. On the back here we have a battery uh, check switch. On the earlier Yashica cameras, uh, there's also a check lamp next to the switch. So if you push the button here, the lamp next to the uh, button should illuminate. On the GS and GS in, uh, when you push the uh, battery check switch, the light should come on uh, in the film counter. As you can see there, they're flickering off and on. Uh, earlier cameras featured uh, a slide latch to open the film door and a cutout on the bottom to make removing and inserting the film easier. 
uh, the GS and GSN have uh, integrated uh, rewind knob and uh, door release latch. And also simply pulling up on this will allow you to take the film cartridge out more easily. On the bottom here, we have uh, uh, the release button, which is you, you push this to uh, release the film spool and that allows you to rewind the film. On this side here, we have the uh, battery cover. Now, uh, the batteries which were used in these are no longer available. The Ashika Electro series originally used a mercury battery, and for environmental reasons, these were banned. And a new battery was never made available for these, so people simply made do with uh, an adapter and a 4LR44 or 4SR44 battery. Uh, Amazon recently began making a new battery. The uh, What's it called? The Excel uh, A32PX battery. It's a 6 volt battery which works in these cameras and doesn't require an adapter. Just simply put it in like you would put in the original battery and the camera's good to go. And let's see, as I said I was going to talk a little bit about some common problems with these. Um, these cameras were quite popular. They weren't really cheap cameras. But you know, because they, they 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 feature really good workmanship. Someone once told me they said that uh, there's no excuse for a Yashica to cost so much money because in recent years the uh, Electro series have become uh, more popular and they become more valuable. Uh, ten years ago, you could buy a, a working uh, Yashica Electro uh, GSN for ten dollars, but nowadays you know you're looking uh, at at least a hundred dollars for one which works. And uh, he said that it was crazy to pay that much money. And I thought, well, actually, when you compare it to something like a Leica M camera, there isn't really that much difference. The die cast aluminum on the inside, cast brass or you know, pressed brass uh, covers on the top and bottom. Uh, the quality of the materials and stuff is about the same between you know, a Yashica and the Leica. The Leica is more refined mechanically, but uh, uh, side by side uh, with the Yashica Electro 35, uh, uh, you can easily get as good results with this and uh, I own a large number of Leica M cameras and some really nice ones. Uh, but uh, if I want a simple easy to use camera which I'm not afraid of dropping or someone stealing, it's, it's much better to carry one of these than say a six or seven thousand dollar you know black paint Leica, an MP or an old black M3 or something. I've, I've, I've had maybe a hundred Leicas over my life. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, I, I do have a Yashica Electro, which is my keeper camera. Uh, I can never seem to hold on to a Leica for camera for a long time. Someone will offer me enough money on it uh, for it, and you know, uh, it, if they make me an offer which is too good to you know, refuse, then you know, I'll let it go. But I've got a couple of these cameras which uh, yeah, I would never let go. Uh, the Yashicas are really that good. and. Uh, just really amazing. And because they were amazing, I, zillions of these things were made. And the problem is though, zillions were made, uh, zillions of them are not still working today. Uh, it, it can be very difficult to find uh, a Yashica uh, Electro which is in good working condition. Uh, when you're buying a uh, Yashica Electro 35, the first thing you want to do is uh, check to see if the battery check lamp works. If the battery check lamp works, okay, that means that there's power going through the camera. The next thing you need to do is check and make sure that the, the meter lamps work. So, yeah, the red light comes on, the yellow light comes on. Okay, so, so the meter, that means the meter is working, the battery check lamp is working, and uh, so uh, those are important points. When you're pushing on the button here, another thing to check for is to listen for noise and look for flickering on the light. Now, the noise or flickering on the light is not a big problem. Uh, that can very easily be fixed. Simply remove the bottom cover with the three screws, and here on this side, in front of the uh, release button, uh, on the front you'll find, you'll see the contact switch, uh, which moves up and down when you push the shutter button. Just put a few drops of lighter fluid on this switch, or a few drops of uh, lacquer thinner, put the cover back on, uh, push the switch a few times and the flickering and the buzziness will disappear. Uh, sometimes these cameras have bad bulbs. The camera may work completely well, but the bulb is burned out. Uh, replacing the bulb requires a little bit of soldering or a little bit of twisting and taping if you're not good at soldering, and plus you need a new bulb. 
but uh, a burned bulb, burned out bulb doesn't mean that the camera won't work or that you can't use it. You just have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, it's, it's more important that the over uh, bulb work than the under bulb because the, no matter how slow the shutter speed goes or how, how dark it is, you'll, you'll get a correct exposure there. But the Yashica does have a maximum shutter speed, which is kind of low. So it's kind of important to know uh, what the shutter speed is. And if the light comes on, it tells you it's at 1 250th or higher. The next thing in these cameras, which is a problem, is the POD or pad of death, which is a urethane spacer, which fits between uh, the slider switch and the shutter button. And it's necessary to maintain the space between the switch and the shutter button and keep the contacts in the right place. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're, you're not going to get consistent shutter speed. Uh, every time you push the button, the shutter will fire at a different speed. If it fires at all, uh, it may stick or whatever. So uh, replacing the POD, a lot of people say that you need to remove the leatherette and unbolt the front plate and the lens mount and top cover and all that. And that's not really necessary. That's like a, a, a long and difficult job and uh, you're, odd, you're, you're likely to break more than you fix if you try to fix it that way. They're easy enough to fix by simply removing the top cover, removing the old material, and then making uh, a spacer out of urethane or a piece of leather or a piece of rubber will work. Glue that into place. It's a little bit difficult. Uh, it's, you, you need a little bit of a steady hand, and it, if you're, when you're gluing stuff in there, it can be kind of sticky and tricky, but it can be done. And uh, if you can do it by removing the top cover, what is normally a two or three hour job becomes a five minute job. Another thing to look for if the camera doesn't work at all is dirty contacts in the battery compartment. Uh, the old batteries leak in these things and they cause corrosion, scraping the corrosion off of the inside. There's a spring in the bottom here which gets dirty, scrape that clean and then scrape the, the edge of the battery cover on the bottom side clean and often that'll give you uh, power enough for the camera to work. Uh, sometimes the corrosion will cause the uh, switch or I get the spring on the inside to be disconnected from the power wire. Uh, that can be replaced, but it re involves removing the top cover and the range finder and then running a new wire from the battery compartment to the circuit board on the back. And that's not really a difficult job. It's a lot easier than replacing the POD, but uh, uh, you simply can't just strip the wires and resolder it because the corrosion on these things tend to travel up from one end of the wire to the other. Uh, no matter how much you try to clean the wires, you can never get the solder to stick on them. So uh, there, there are a few things wrong with these cameras which are not fixable, except for occasionally the uh, electromagnet which operates the shutter, that can go bad. And in that case, I don't bother to fix the camera unless I have an extra you know, magnet sitting around. and. Another problem these things have is uh, sticky shutter blades, especially the earlier ones. The later cameras came with a kind of uh, uh, a different coating on the shutter blades, which allows the any oil or, or whatever contamination uh, to to settle inside the finish without uh, without contacting the other shutter blades. The earlier ones have kind of a gunmetal shiny finish, and you can see the machine marks. Unfortunately, these ones are much more easy to stick. So if you have an early uh, GT or early GS or early G, uh, the shutter can stick. Uh, you can free it up by removing the, the front uh, lens element and cleaning it with uh, a little bit, just a little bit of uh, lighter fluid on a cotton swab and then blowing it dry, letting it sit for a few hours and usually that'll free it up and it'll start working again. Uh, for cleaning the lenses, uh, to clean fungus from the inside, uh, you have to remove the nameplate from the front. When that comes off, you can remove the front lens group. Uh, set your uh, shutter speed selector to B, open up the aperture and hold down the shutter button and it'll open and you can clean the inside of the rear element. And while the front element is out, you can clean that off. Sometimes the front ring around the front element comes off, but the rear element won't come out. There's a second ring with uh, two with a retaining ring and two slots or holes. You remove that retaining ring and the rear element will come out and then you can clean any fungus or dirt off of those. So the Ashika is clean, easier to clean and service than other cameras. Uh, to clean the range finder and stuff, you need to remove uh, the three screws, uh, two on the side, one on the back. Uh, take the two screws to remove this plate here. Uh, you have to remove the film winding knob 
remove the screw here and the winding lever and with a pair of tweezers take this screw out and take off the uh, uh, film speed dial and then lift the cover off and you can easily access the viewfinder mechanism inside for cleaning and then you can simply put it back on. Uh, I may do a video in the future with a step-by-step -step process on how to do these repairs. But anyway, uh, that is it. I'm, this is, video is about 20 minutes long now looking at my timer, so I think I'm about out of time. So I'm finished with uh, my, uh, my video about the Ashka Electro 35 uh, GSN. If you have any questions about these cameras or any comments, feel free to leave them uh, below. And uh, please tune in for more videos. Uh, and thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye.